Hello, and welcome back to the Mary Tyler Moore, where we're going to really get going on the Isabella River Walk today. And today will be Phase 1, Part A, because Phase 1 goes all the way from Methuselah Rock down to Isabella Point down here, and uh, this is just going to be one little section of that, so it's going to be part A. And we're going to be adding all kinds of fun things downtown towards the point. I'm really excited to show you, and thank you for joining me here on another episode of The Mary Tyler Moore. We're gonna get straight down to work right from the get-go. There's a lot that's going to be done here and we're going to start with a great public space, a great lovely amphitheater so that uh, lots of people can gather for a lovely audience of all kinds of performances, whether it be music, whether it be uh, uh, pachakacha, or perhaps uh, TED Talks, or maybe a Shakespearean play, who knows? Um, there are all kinds of wonderful things that can be done in an auditorium, in an, sorry, not an auditorium, an amphitheater. And an amphitheater has a lot of great, um, a lot of things about it that indoor theaters don't get to have. And that's mostly because you have the sky as your backdrop and your backdrop is constantly changing. You don't need a whole lot of uh, pizzazz in your set and uh, lighting because you have the sky to help you out with that. Um, just a beautiful space. Um, I did expect the ground to conform to the walls when I um, softened the terrain around here. So instead, I'm going to uh, improvise with a lovely brick key wall that goes around going to take a little bit of fiddling around with to uh, get it into place just right. But I feel like this is going to be a wonderful space um, for people to gather about uh, downtown in a, you know, it's a very dense area without a lot of wide open spaces for audiences to gather. Here is just the perfect remedy to that. Um, takes a little bit of diddling around, but eventually it gets to be just right and it is a lovely little nestled corner in the river walk uh, where wonderful things can happen really actually it came to kind of remind me of when i was a kid in my grade school our library had this little area we called the pit and it was a u-shaped area with a couple of tiers to sit on and it was carpeted it was very simple um, but just a nice area to have a, a group of people gather together to listen to a performance. Now, I'm not exactly the, you know, the best at detailing things, but this is um, one where I'm going to do my best. And we're going to make the river walk seem as lived in and, uh, and lovely as possible. So we're going to start off with a lovely stone square in front of it, using these lovely Portuguese cobblestones, and I'm just going to extend that right out to the edge of the river walk here, right out to the river, and uh, do a bit of detailing. We're going to make sure we have some, uh, you know, bicycle parking, and of course the garbage receptacles, and a drinking fountain, um, you know, place to sit down, some greenery, and of course we're going to need some posters to advertise what is going to be happening in this auditorium, uh, maybe not Sunset Boulevard, but some great musical acts can uh, can definitely perform here. So I'll use some very simple procedural objects uh, um, skills to get things going uh, so these lovely posters can uh, be made to fit perfectly on the outer wall of the amphitheater. Now, most of the guests of the amphitheater seem to use that front wall as the entrance, even though there's no doorway there. 
I'm not entirely sure if I can do something to change that. I know there is a mod where you can change the transfer point for, let's say, garbage trucks or delivery trucks, but I don't know if there's a mod where you can change the space where people walk in and out of a building. And back here we have these problematic areas uh, where it's just a big dip, and I really don't want people to go wandering around back here and uh, fall down a giant crevice. So I'm going to fill it in. Um, I don't have any ploppable grass surfaces, but I do have asphalt, and uh, I'm going to cover up that asphalt with some lovely grass um, decals. So kind of going a little bit of a roundabout way to filling in these holes, um, but I just couldn't manage to do it with the uh, landscape tools. So we have to um, jerry-rig it, come up with something that's a little bit MacGyvered, but it works. Um, making it look a bit more manicured around too with a mown lawn look, uh, just to make it look like the uh, the amphitheater has its own grounds crew that really care about it and really take care. All right, in just a second, we're going to take a look at how all this amphitheater is pretty much finished up here. About to move on to the next part of this part A. But before we do, we're gonna appreciate this little pocket just for a little while. Really has a large floor area for removable seating um, and quite a sound system on that stage as well. Nice to see some people dancing on the floor instead of a completely empty amphitheater. I, I, I do wish audiences could fill the amphitheater. That would be nice. On to the next part of part A, the Ferris wheel. This is destined to become a big tourist attraction, drawing over a hundred people uh, to it in no time at all. It does need to be attached to a street, much like the amphitheater, so I do plop in a little segment of pedestrian road and connect it up to the amphitheater road so they can uh, share access. We don't have to have cars coming and going too much through here. Oh, that works out lovely, doesn't it? All right, now um, we are going to be making a large plaza area for the ferris wheel in front it's not just going to plop a sad little ferris wheel there and um, nothing else is going to be around it uh, that wouldn't really that's not really my style um, so we're going to again just like we did with the nice portuguese cobbles in front of the amphitheater we're going to use a good red brick in this area something a bit more energetic and lively uh, to sort of match the ferris wheels activity and uh, I'm gonna make sure things aren't going to be level because it is a riverside but i um, going to try to keep it as soft contoured as possible. Um, there is a lot of fiddling around with the decals. Uh, I, I have cut a lot of it out but um, in the future you'll see when the decals are finished, um, you know, if I did this little square in that amount of time, later on you'll see even more. Um, but it, it did get too tedious for me to include in the video. Uh, but we are going to have a nice wide area all throughout here so that it's really significant and impactful as you're strolling along the river walk. You come across this area of bright red bricks that really pop out uh, and you know you're in a specific little region of the river walk and this is what the river walk is going to have all throughout um, a lot of different little areas with different identities 
that uh, come together into one long thread of entertainment. Um, I, I think uh, beside the Ferris wheel, what would go quite well there is a, a space for people to wait. So I think a little cafe area or a, an area with some vendors and some picnic tables is probably best. Uh, that way when people who don't want to go on the Ferris wheel have friends up on the Ferris wheel, there's a nice place for them to, um, to hang out. We need some sort of diversion for them too, because not everybody is a fan of heights. Um, been to many, many, many amusement parks and theme parks and carnivals, and every single time that I've gone up on a ride, there's always been at least one person in the group that I'm with who decides to stay back. Sometimes it's because they're getting tired, sometimes it's because they're afraid of heights, sometimes they're not feeling well, and sometimes they're just there to hold everybody else's purses while everybody gets on the ride that's going to throw their belongings around. Um, so there are always going to be members of a group that aren't getting on the ride. And a big Ferris wheel like this is a uh, quite an endeavor. You get on it. It's not just a couple minutes to go around. It These are cabins that you get inside uh, and the doors close and you're completely sealed up in a, a glass egg basically and you go around it. It takes, you know, 15-20 minutes. Um, your purse holder is not going to be hanging around standing there watching you go around for 15-20 minutes um, unless there's a nice place for them to sit down as well. So we've got all of these great Italian festival um, kiosks around. I decide not to put the washrooms there because looking down from the Ferris wheel wouldn't be pleasant. Um, besides, there are a lot of PTT toilets just up the riverbank um, along the point of Isabella Point. Between those skyscrapers, there are public washrooms filling in some bikes just to make it look like a loved and used place um, and to, you know, make me feel like maybe there are more cyclists in my city than there are. Make me a little bit happier. Why not? Very little effort involved. And we're about to start a new bit of our segments called Walk With, where we go for a walk with someone through the city. Today we're going to go with Pierce Cook, who's staying in the Peace Hotel and Conference Center. He's going to show us the swanky interior. But first, an Easter egg. A couple little things that uh, special to you who have watched all this way through the episode, just for those who are dedicated enough to watch the whole video. You get to see the Jim Henson National Puppet Theater and Jim Henson Memorial here. And uh, this is a lovely space in the center of Sophia. And not too far from it, we have the Printmakers Forum, which is a lovely square with a statue to Gutenberg. Um, we have old factory buildings in the cultural district of Sofia, and these are renovated into studios. Studios for working and studios for living. All of them are uh, below market value so that uh, artists can afford to live here and keep the city a vibrant place contributing to the culture of the Tyler Moore. Um, we also, within this square, we have uh, the Museum of Print and uh, the Sophia Main Post Office, which you might recognize as the Science Center, but here is used as Sophia's Main Post Office, which is located right beside the K-SIM television station, Channel 8. Uh, but this lovely little square here is the place to be for paper and print enthusiasts like myself. I'm an intaglio printmaker by, uh, by training. So here is the, this is the part of the Tyler Moore where you will find me living in a lovely old studio. But back to a walk with Pierce Cook. We're going to be doing this more often, um, just hitching a ride with somebody through the city to see where they go. Now, Pierce has agreed 
to show us the lavish lobby of the hotel he's staying in, something we normally wouldn't be able to do. The Peace Hotel is really only for foreign dignitaries and VIPs. A lot of important treaties and documents are negotiated there. Uh, the Tyler Moore is world renowned for being a very peaceable and neutral place. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of organizations and nations come here to negotiate their peace treaties. We get to be getting our sneak peek of the lavish, plush interior of this hotel. Um, he's only going to take us to the elevator lobby though, and then he says we have to scram before we get in trouble. Um, when he heads up to his room, but this is our big chance and While we're doing it, we get to go on a lovely tour of what we've done along the river walk here and uh, Kind of seems as though Pierce doesn't want to go straight to his hotel. He's giving us the the scenic tour of the lovely river walk as well, which is a, a nice opportunity um, just to go for a nice stroll around what uh, is soon to become the hub of activity for all of Isabella. Um, now we're on a pedestrian path, but right beside us is a lovely bike path that we could go on as well if we wanted to move a little bit faster. And the arch of that bridge is working out perfectly. Looks like we have just enough head clearance to make it underneath if that is indeed where we are headed. I'm not entirely sure which way Pierce is taking us. He seems to be enjoying our walk. Oh, now we're hopping on a bike. I, I really hope he didn't stick me on the handlebars um, heading on under the bridge. I think we passed the Peace Hotel, but Pierce is just uh, having a kick showing us around, I suppose. Uh, I hope Pierce is a trustworthy person that we hitched a ride with. Okay, I guess off the bicycle, back on the walking path again. Oh no, wait, we are right here at the Peace. Oh, there's the Peace Hotel right there. Uh, we're going to take the path that leads us right up to the very front door of the Peace Hotel and Conference Center beautiful place. I'm really excited to see what the inside looks like. It's just so prestigious. I cannot wait. We're just about to on the other side of this door, everybody. Ready? Here we go. Oh. What? This is it? This is the fancy hotel? It looks like it's been stripped down to its facade. I where where's the plush carpet, the golden lanterns, the what? Wow! I guess we've all been fooled. I guess uh, Peace Hotel is all about minimalism and concrete block. So I guess that's what happens when you go for a walk with somebody, and they tell you they're gonna show you their fancy swanky hotel lobby never mind with pierce on to the fountain walk uh, no more dilly dallying time to get down to work and finish off part a of phase one of the isabella river walk we're going to have a lovely fountain walk out here now this region here isn't going to have a whole lot of activity because it is going to be a a, a basically a, an avenue um, there will be a bridge going over the train tracks when phase two gets going. Um, and this is going to be a major transit point from um, this end of the peninsula down to the tip and around. So uh, for the time being, it's not going to be a particularly active region. We're just going to make it beautiful. Um, the sound of the fountains is going to soothe and calm everyone around here. When you come in from the train across the river from Malolatan, you're going to see these beautiful fountains gushing at you. And uh, going to make sure we have some lush gardens leading down to the fountain walk as well. Just make it beautiful. 
um, so that when the time comes that phase one has moved along, we're going to have an absolutely gorgeous space that people will be traversing back and forth to go between the activities along the river walk. So I'm going to be sure to involve a lot of these quiet, still spaces throughout the river walk so that we can have some beautiful areas of just enjoying gardens and nature and the outdoors and the river uh, without anything too complicated to distract us. And uh, the fountain walk is the first of those spaces. Some lovely hazel trees, some jacarandas, some junipers, and some Apollo trees as well, uh, mixed in with the bluebells and camellia bushes that are lining the path. And now I have to select a lighting system, but I want something that's not going to be breaking up the path too much. Um, so I, I eventually opt with these, um, these very large boulevard street lights, but the they're intended to go on a median on a street, but I use them sideways as a way to sort of, uh, I'm getting two lights with one standard pole at least. So I, I'm, I feel like I'm conserving, uh, land space and walking space by only having one pole for every two lights that really have a broad reach. And, uh, let's, let's take a, a little walk through here in a moment. Um, put some benches down so we have a place to sit. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take a stroll through here. Bellissimo! That is a lovely, lovely place to go for a stroll on a balmy evening, even though right now it is still winter time here. Um, but the blossoms are beginning to come out because I am getting tired of winter. Um, but for now, I believe that's about all we're going to have for today. Thank you so very much for joining me here again today. I really do have so much fun sharing this with you. I hope you come back to join me again soon, and I hope uh, you will like and subscribe if you like these and want to come back for more and be notified whenever I upload a new one. There is a lot of work still to be done. Malolatan is still going to be built out, but that is something that needs to be done slowly as the RCI demand uh, is really the one dictating when things get built there. I don't want to be flooding my city with too many homes or businesses and end up throwing things out of whack. Um, but until then, we have completed Phase 1 Part A of the Isabella River Walk. Part B will be coming someday. Check back for it soonish, and you will get a lovely surprise. Until next time, thank you again so much for joining me. I hope to see you soon. Take care and keep exploring the Tyler Moore. Bye bye.